protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com news out of London cross the wires what right around 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. this morning. Finally. Finally that's right Prince William and Kate Middleton are going to be married. They're getting engaged now. They're going to be married next spring or summer in London. There is a statement out of Buckingham Palace. Queen Elizabeth said she is absolutely delighted for her grandson and his bride to be. The United States was founded on July 4th 1776 in resistance to the hegemonic despotic, tyrannical rule of King George III and the abuse against the colonies. And most of the British Parliament was against going to war with their fellow Englishmen because the king was unpopular there as well. It was known that he was a German king, his father being brought over to rule England. These people could barely speak English. Nothing against Germans, but you don't see me going over to Germany to rule them. The very essence of July 4th and 1776 is resistance to the disgusting House of Windsor. They didn't get that name until around World War I because before that they were known as the Saxe Coburg Gothas. Notice that we hear their names, Prince William. You never hear his last name, do you? The slave public, many of them in England, who support these people don't even know their last names because they don't want you knowing their last names. Three times in the last three years, the Parliament in Canada hasn't done what the Queen of England wants, so she suspended them, shut down the Parliament. Happened in the late 70s in Australia. This is a tyrannical group pushing eugenics, population reduction, all the carbon taxes. Uh, prince Philip, the Queen's husband, another German royal prince, uh, is a supporter of eugenics, his cousin. Uh, who was uh, the uh, prince married to the Queen of the Netherlands, an admitted Nazi, an admitted eugenicist. The point is, these are the most filthy, degenerate people you can imagine. She owns more than half of Canada, more than half the land in England, and then she's paid by the government for her palaces and all the rest of it. It's disgusting. And to watch U.S. television fawning, Fox, CNN, CBS, all of them, oh, it's so wonderful. No one in America can wait until next week, the way they're hyping it. One week until the royal wedding, this is exciting stuff. I mean, it's, it's hard to, I mean, the energy is just palpable. Young couples get married, they're just hoping that some bank will be nice enough to give them a mortgage. Yeah. These folks have a number of palaces to pick from. NBC News is launching a free royal wedding app for the iPad. Got a this is truly a love story that captures everybody's attention. This goes back to Edward Bernays a hundred years ago saying, look, to make politicians and royalty popular, we'll have Hollywood stars come to banquets and events with them. We'll have music stars. We'll have other people go there to basically make these elites be seen as celebrities themselves. You know why America was founded? Because under the imperial royal system in Europe and England, if you weren't part of the inside group who had basically the patronage uh, of the crown, where they gave you land, houses, jobs, you couldn't even get a license to be a carpenter, a license to be a blacksmith, a license to brew beer, unless their local lords gave you the authorization. So it wasn't just that you had to pay outrageous taxes. You had to get their permission to even have a job, to have a profession. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the essence of globalism, is big mega corporations 
many of which are owned and controlled by the German royal family that runs England uh, and, of course, uh, the Netherlands. The whole system they've set up and they promote is about this new global corporate system worldwide that through government power shuts down their competition and transfers the people's wealth through taxes to the offshore cartels. These people are parasites, they're disgusting, they're filthy, and if we want to reclaim the spirit of 1776, we should realize how abhorrent monarchy is in all of its forms. And that includes the UN and the new royalty uh, under the unelected EU bureaucratic system where over 80% of England's laws, even though they're not part of the EU, are made by EU bureaucrats. Please, everyone, remember the spirit of 1776. I know a lot of folks in England are saying they're going to go out and protest it. First, the government said, you've got the day off slaves. You don't have to go to work on the you know big royal wedding coming up next week. And then the Republicans, uh, that's a group that want to get rid of the monarchy in England, said, we're going to protest in the streets. And the government said, you're not allowed to protest. Meanwhile, they criticized Syria for banning protest. So anytime you see some mind-numb zombie talking about how exciting the wedding is or how they watched it, you're watching a bunch of twitly, inbred idiots that can't even dress themselves and have valets. And until just a few decades ago, they try to keep it quiet. They have people that wipe their butts for them, groom of the stool. Do you know the history of America? Do you know it started in resistance to this very usurping German family who aren't even British? Do you know that most of the English hate the royal family? Do you know they have a secret police system that basically threatens people that talk about getting rid of the monarchy? Do you know that Princess Diana on record told her butler and others that made a videotape saying Prince Charles has threatened me, he's going to kill me in a fake auto accident? These people are absolutely anathema. And the servile folks that have been raised to worship these people and all the little old ladies that think it's cute well, that's why we're enslaved. That's why our country's bankrupt. That's why we're going to hell in a handbasket. Because you've forgotten what it is to be an American. Or perhaps you were never even taught. But now you're going to learn what it's like to be a subject, a slave. What is royalty? Royalty is Kim Jong-il in North Korea. His father took over and then gave him power. And now he's giving power to his son. Why don't they just put gold crowns on their heads and dress up with long flowing robes? Uh, maybe then Americans would celebrate the royal wedding of Kim Jong-il's son. Oh, but they wear little military uniforms and we know how clownish it is. But somehow we've been tricked at wearing big gold crowns and flowing robes. Is it more ridiculous and stupid? America has been great because it's not about what race you are or what family pedigree or how murderous your great granddaddy was. It's about what you individually can do. It's about what you individually have to offer, being an inventor, a trailblazer, an explorer, someone who's brave, an artist, someone who has incredible literature in their soul. These royal, crony capitalist, non-free market systems always wage war against the individual. They always wage war against the productive. And the British royal family are at the head of pushing world population reduction. They are at the head of one-child policies. They are at the head of eugenics. They taught the Nazis everything they knew about eugenics. Do you understand this is mainline history? The King of England had to advocate at the beginning of World War II because he wanted to merge with Hitler. The British royal family come from a long line of dictators. They're oppressive. They're anti-liberty and freedom. And here it is, all over the British and world news today, the outrage that dictators from oppressive Middle Eastern and African countries are coming, a whole gaggle of them, to the royal wedding. It's disgusting. It's a bunch of hereditary gangsters meeting, laughing at how they've tricked the public to worship their tyranny and think it's cute and funny and fashionable. So down with the Royals, down with the saxe coburg Gothas and their fake house name Windsor and their New World Order trying to retake North America. The planet's waking up and the corporate barons, the UN barons, the unelected bureaucracy, the new royalty backed up by the old royalty are going down. We redeclare the spirit of 1776 against you and your ilk. You're on notice. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>
My friends, please pay attention to the information I'm about to cover and research the links that we'll post below this video so that you understand none of this is my opinion, it is fact. This issue is the most important issue going on in the world. It is scientific tyranny. I've read literally hundreds of government white papers and documents and books like EcoScience where the White House science czar talks about forcibly drugging the water to dumb you down and sterilize you. But now, they're in the New York Times and Time Magazine and everywhere and all the major medical journals promoting not only drugging the water with lithium, which by the way they're already doing, but now they're announcing it, to make you servile. But now they are admitting that they plan to deploy something I learned about a decade ago. Hundreds of different vaccines. They're really biological re-engineering live viruses that they inject into your body and the live viruses go in and attack your brain. And they claim, oh, it's to stop drug addiction. Those same receptor sites that pick up opiates and nicotine and alcohol pick up your normal endorphins. It's part of being a normal human being. Those drugs mimic that. And the viruses attack those receptor sites and kill them and create dead tissue. It is a vaccine-induced live virus lobotomy. Now they're coming out and saying the American people and the people of the world are sick. And major medical journals are saying we need to give everybody these shots to make them feel better, to stop having anxiety, to stop being angry. In other words, to take away your instinct for self-preservation your will to survive, to make you accept all the bad things that are happening, to turn you into a biological android, a type of zombie. You cannot make this up. Please send this video to everyone you know. For God's sakes, understand how serious this is. This is a global scientific corporate takeover of life itself. The globalists aren't just re-engineering corn and wheat and every other major crop and engineering sterilants into them. Suddenly, all over the news, they're promoting lithium and Prozac and other drugs in the water. Head bioethicist at Cambridge, they're the people that advise and set medical policy for doctors, are announcing they want to force drug you, and they're calling it cognitive enhancement. I've got a CBS news piece where they say that mercury helps your intelligence when everyone knows it causes brain damage. Mercury containing vaccines may help not harm kids according to two new studies in the journal Pediatrics. So when they say cognitive enhancement, they mean cognitive brain damage. They mean taking your essence, literally your psyche, who you are away. And they sit up there saying, well, if, if we put Prozac in the water, it'll cut suicide, when it's admitted that Prozac on its insert can cause suicide. I have mainstream news articles that have just come out in the last few days in England where people have a tenfold increase in convulsions and they develop epilepsy after the flu shot. I talked to top scientists who studied the flu shot last year and found bizarre viral RNA in it that deals with the brain. I've had top brain surgeons on, like Dr. Russell Blaylock, to talk about this and the government documents that he's read, how this is part of a eugenics population control program. I mean, here it is. London Telegraph, flu jab linked to fits and under fives. And it goes on to say they've been told not to give children 110,000 in England under five the shot because they had convulsions at 10 times the regular rate. Lindsay Lohan isn't what matters. Mel Gibson isn't what matters. The depression doesn't even matter. War with Iran is not even that important. Compared to a medical dictatorship and under the National Health Service in England and now National Health Care here in the U.S., they're slashing regular health care like cancer surgery or having a broken leg fixed and converting it over to psychiatry and this biological warfare or biopsychiatry where they say, don't worry about drugs anymore for your depression. We're going to give you a shot that alters your brain by viruses literally attacking your brain. And they're rolling it out in public trials over a hundred of these vaccines right now. And they're clearly spiking other vaccines with it. If you love your children, if you love your family, you've got to realize this is a creeping, scientific, incremental, soft kill system. Let's go over some of these articles. Jabs that could put a stop to stress without slowing us down. And it says they're going to make humans better. 
They've re-engineered potatoes and corn. Why not just re-engineer humans? And they quote uh, all these major medical journals saying how great it is. And they say, this could change society, the professor said. And they have a government-funded Stanford team with these neuroprotective viruses. And this particular vaccine, one of hundreds, is a live herpes virus engineered to only eat certain key brain tissue. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing really. I just feel that I need something stronger. If you have a problem, don't hesitate to ask for assistance. Yes, thank you. I'll be all right. Call 348. And they're not asking you. They're just rolling it out. And this isn't like some uh, drug that they give people for a decade that causes hundreds of thousands of women to have deformed children. This isn't some drug that just makes one person, you know, have a heart attack. All these other recall drugs, these aren't even drugs. These are genetically engineered nanotech viruses that go in and turn you into a servile biological android. Do you understand? The vaccines that they're rolling out are live virus bioweapons that re-engineer your brain. You've seen the reports where all over the world, Asia, Africa, Latin America, Central Asia, they give children UN sanctioned polio shots and the children come down with weaponized polio and die. And the government admits, oh, it was an accident with that vaccine. People are now waking up to the fact that the vaccines are causing convulsions and brain damage and cancer. And so what's their answer? They're coming out and saying, don't worry, instead of a shot, have a banana. They're coming out, Nobel laureate scientist defines future vaccines is food. They're pharmacological crops that grow the live virus, whether it gives you cancer or gives you polio or literally sends viruses in to eat parts of your brain. It's all being done. Bill Gates is coming out with a biologically engineered mosquito to forcibly deliver vaccines to you. Uh, there's new drug discovery going on. Our foundation has backed a vaccine that's going into phase three trial that starts in a couple months. And that should save over two-thirds of the lives if it's effective. And most sickeningly, over and over again, they claim, oh, it's to make you not depressed anymore. All of you have problems. You shouldn't be upset about things. And we're meant to get upset at a biological level and say no to this tyranny. And so they're coming out saying, oh, we're going to re-engineer your brain, cognitive enhancements. We're going to help you. The mercury's helping your brain on newscasts all over the country. Oh, the convulsions are helping you. Oh, lithium, a toxic metal that they want to put in the water, it's helping you. You're going to feel much better after all of this is done. What's wrong? Never mind. They're not coming for us. They're already here. We're in danger. Many of you who have a child who seems to be dumbed down and isn't as smart as anybody else in your family and something's wrong with them. It's the vaccines. It's the GMO food. Many of you who had an 18-month-old baby who was healthy and happy, they take that third round of shots. They have a convulsion that night and they never talk again. They're turning you into servile minions who will do whatever you're told and who can't get angry and can't resist. Why do they want lithium in the water? They admit to make you submit. What does sodium fluoride and all the studies do? Make you submit. And what do these vaccines do? They make you passive. They make you unable to get angry. Anger is a propulsion system to make you stand up for your species. This is a hostile corporate takeover, the very genetic code of not just the plants and animals, but humanity itself. It is the most diabolical covert operation ever seen. And now these people are out in the open. It's admitted. Do you understand? It's admitted. They want to make these shots mandatory in public schools to make you servile. Oh, but you don't want to become addicted to drugs. What do you think drugs mimic? They mimic natural chemicals in the brain that stir creativity and anger and love and everything else. It's those key receptors. They're literally going for the soul of man that is in the beautiful, detailed, complex, 
computer that is the human mind. This is a hack against the human mind, a hack against the human soul, and we must stand up and resist it. They realize there's a worldwide revolt against this technocracy, against dehumanization. You need to become educated on these facts and join the resistance against this scientific dictatorship. Now is the time to realize that history is taking place right now, that we're living in the 21st century and a scientific tyranny has taken over. If we are successful in defeating these people, Historians will look back on this time as the greatest covert genocide in history. They will look back on it as the ultimate example of pure evil and corruption, this creeping death. Now I've warned the public, and I will continue to detail what's happening. In areas where lithium in trace amounts is in the drinking water, there seems to be a lower level of suicidality, and in the Texas counties that were studied, there's actually a lower crime rate. And how these enemies come out and talk in their simpering, lisping tones real softly to, to coax you and, 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 and to advertise all this death and dehumanization as if it's good. The theory is that very low or trace amounts of lithium enhance connectivity between neurons. And doing that over the course of a lifetime, a lifetime exposure, makes the brain more healthy. Now I want to talk to the social engineers whose religion is a control freak system of dehumanization. You are like cancer. You're racing through the body politic. You think you're invincible and you may kill the host. You may destroy our species, but not without a fight. You are disgusting, wicked people who love ruling over others. Everything you do creates death and destruction in its path. You sold Prozac as a way to stop depression when in your own trials you knew it massively increased suicide. Now you're telling us how great lithium, a toxic metal, an antipsychotic is going to be put in the water mandatory. And we've got the studies. It's already in most of the water supplies. We know you're adding it. You are sickening, disgusting filth. And we're going to rally the world population against you. And we're going to bring you to justice. And I pray, God, that humanity makes it through what you've attempted to do, how you've saddled up next to us like a spider in the dark and tried to spin your webs of control around us while we were asleep. But the sleeping giant that is humanity is waking up to who you are and what you are. And I pray to the creator of the universe, and I beg for just the average person out there as well to research just who you are and how you're involved in a scorched earth takeover of society to secure your ill-gotten gains. And I want you to know that I'm going to do everything I can to rally free humanity against you and that we are going to defeat you. But whether we win or not, whether you lose or fail, at least we were real humans. We were good, decent people that saw the truth and we stood up against you. And no matter what happens in this, you are still degenerate, dehumanizing filth. You are aberrant, malfunctioning trash. And you look at everything good and wholesome and tell us that we are malfunctioning. So I pray that you be defeated. But either way, in this time and space, on this planet, good people stood up against what you are and did everything they could to help the innocents. When I look at all the children that you've brain damaged and all the children dying of cancer, and I look at all the things that you've done to humanity, it makes me want to vomit. You are doing this because this is only the next wave to first neutralize us so we're calm and sedate and can't resist so you can roll in with the hard kill weapons. I know that. And I want to tell you something else. A lot of you that think that you're part of the winning team, you're going to find out that your masters hate you more than they even hate free humanity because they know that you know where the bodies are buried and they know you're a bunch of wicked control freaks that they need to kill first once they take over or you'll start trying to overthrow them. They understand your nature. They use their propaganda to manipulate good men throughout history to serve their evil aims. So understand this, you're going to fail one way or another. You've decided to put your soul on the side of darkness for all eternity for what you're doing to humanity and butchering our DNA and literally mutating the human spirit in your control freak lust for power. And so all of you, one way or another, will fail. So all that matters is, in this time and space, I stood up for what's right. I saw you clearly for what you are. And I know in my heart there's a very good chance we're going to beat you. But that's up to all the people out there watching this. Do they have the courage to face the facts? Do they have the courage to take action?
If you feel you are not properly sedated, call 348-844 immediately. Failure to do so may result in prosecution for criminal drug evasion. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com The Internet as we know it is in the process of being dismantled. It's known as Internet 2. More than a decade ago, a consortium of top tech companies, along with universities and government, began meeting once a year. And they openly said that they would expand the Internet, get everyone addicted to using it, and as soon as society was completely reliant on it, they would unveil the fact that it was really a DARPA surveillance control grid to track and trace all human activity. They were really smart. They give you Google Earth satellite system so that everyone gets accustomed on spying on each other. And now the government is using it to harass farmers, uh, to go after people building a uh, shed in their backyard when it violates zoning laws or to stop people from collecting rainwater. Your name is Tom. You live just off of Fifth Street. Nice car, Tom. Nice house. What's not so nice is you owe Pennsylvania $4,212 in back taxes. They've come out and said Google was founded with NSA and CIA money. But it's a lot worse than that. Google has been caught in the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia driving around, not just uh, taking photos and video for Google Street View, that's just the cover, but with electronic mast illegally violating wiretapping laws, grabbing everyone's wireless data and decoding it. This is a private mercenary army. Just like there's more Blackwater uh, and DynCorp contractors in Iraq and Afghanistan than there are U.S. troops, Google is the quasi-private, quasi-governmental arm of this. Yahoo is to a certain extent and others, but Google from its inception with NQTEL, CIA funding, is nothing but a government system to take over the Internet and to steer and control the architecture of the growth and future growth of the web. Net neutrality is the Internet. You can go anywhere in the world, all sites are basically equal. You don't have to pay to get access to certain sites. Those sites individually can do that, but to get to their homepage, you don't have to pay any extra money. And so the internet bills you've paid, the cell phones you've bought, the computers you've purchased, 
all of this has funded the growth of this infrastructure and now Google and Verizon and others are getting together and openly saying that they will allow companies to pay for premium access on these new networks. So it's basically like a toll road company. We have Centra of Spain coming into Austin, Texas, where I live, buying off politicians and then placing toll roads on existing roads. That's pretty much what this is doing. But not only will you have to pay to get access to all sites, sites will have to pay Google and Verizon and others. All the big telecoms are talking about doing this to be able to get access. So that allows them to censor what you're able to see. And they may not even allow you to pay them so that you can have access to the entire web. And separately, we now have the internet kill switch passing out of committee, very close to passing the Senate. It's already passed the House. And the government says we may have to shut down the internet to save it. So they're taking the internet and turning it not into a free encyclopedia of the world, something always growing uh, that is truly democratic, where ideas are on a level playing field. No, they have become completely panicked by the fact that the new media in the last year and a half, and they admit this, is now bigger and more powerful than the mainstream media. The mainstream media has been caught lying about WMDs and so many other issues. They have little or no credibility. In fact, it's at all time lows. So you have this perfect storm of major corporations who are getting their butt kicked by the free market on the web and the government who's being discredited worldwide all coming together, whether it's in Australia or England or Canada or the United States or communist China, the same systems of control are openly now being implemented. The FCC saying they're going to regulate the internet. We've got the Federal Trade Commission saying they want to tax the web. And we've got Google and other major providers coming in and saying that they're basically going to have a hostile takeover of the web as we know it and kill it. All it's going to be is basically like a glorified Netflix where you have a few thousand choices or a glorified cable system where you can only get to the big mega establishment sites and won't be able to get to the alternative sites. The Internet 2 Consortium admits that this is their plan. In fact, their slogan is the Internet is dead and they celebrate that they are killing the old free open organic Internet and forcing you onto this corporate Internet. It's very similar to what happened about 90 years ago. Uh, they had just developed radio. It had become popular. A lot of people were using it. And the FCC came in and shut down the spectrum and only allowed select corporations to be involved. But they could argue that there was a limited spectrum then because it was broadcast. It was going through the air. This is different. The Internet is unlimited. And they can't stand the fact that Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and many other alternative news sites are now dwarfing some of the largest newspapers in the world. The dinosaur media is scared and they're striking back. They're coming in to defend their monopoly. And so if you want to protect the Internet, if you want it to survive, call Congress, call your House members, your senators, and tell them do not end net neutrality and go after Google and others uh, for the serious crimes they've committed driving around seizing people's wireless transmissions. The good news is they've been criminally indicted in several countries. On a side note, Hal Turner, the admitted FBI asset that I exposed more than five years ago, has now been convicted in federal court of threatening judges. And they admitted, the FBI did, in those court proceedings that he was a national security asset and was doing what he did under orders. But still the jury convicted him. And they used people like Hal Turner and others to demonize the alternative media and to use it as a pretext to start curtailing speech. Europe has already done it. Australia is moving to do it. So let's not let the system use these trolls and provocateurs as another way to demonize the web. This is all being done in the name of protecting us, keeping us safe. We see articles every day that the government's got to pass the Cybersecurity Act and have the power to start censoring or completely shutting down the web because Al-Qaeda or somebody else might hack into the nuclear power plants. There's just one big problem with that. Even the Wall Street Journal has reported on the fact that key infrastructure, military bases, B-2 bombers, coal-powered plants, nuclear plants, Submarines, they're not hooked into the internet. They have internet in the facilities, but their key infrastructure is on its own internal systems. It's not true. It's a hoax that terrorists are going to bring down the internet. And finally, 
I'm concerned about a false flag terror attack. Not only are they lying about the fact that hackers can get into infrastructure and shut it down, the Pentagon admits that they're running drills of attacking themselves. And if you look at their past activities and their mindset, this is tailor-made for a false flag staged attack on the web, which will give them the pretext to exercise all this control that they're now preparing to impose on the web. The denial is over. This is really happening. Get the word out today. Send this video and the links below to everyone you know, and let's keep the internet free and open. The system is scared for a good reason. The population of the planet is using the internet to really educate themselves and to rediscover liberty and freedom. And the would-be tyrants are scared. They want to keep their corrupt system going. Thank you for watching. We are under chemical and biological attack. The scientific dictatorship sought to not only overthrow nation states, but to destroy the family and the human species itself. All of us are under attack. The global technocrats launched their assaults through covert means, through our water and food supplies, as well as household items, food packaging, prescription and over-the-counter drugs. All of these systems use to deliver their covert Trojan horse payloads of control. If we are unsuccessful in stopping these technocratic madmen, humanity as we know it is a thing of the past. The report that you are about to see documents this horrific fact in detail. What you do with the information is up to you. You have been warned. The information that you are about to see and hear is some of the most important info that you will ever witness in your life. I can say that unequivocally. And I am begging you for the sake of you and your family and for our human family to please take notes, to check the different documents and news articles that we're gonna show you here today and prove to yourself that we're telling you the truth. In fact, we're only scratching the surface. There is a private global corporate government now operating in the open that is based on the quack science of eugenics. And to put that in a pop culture context or something the general public will understand, Hitler was a eugenicist. And he got his ideas from scientists in England and the United States. Now. The robber barons, like the Rockefellers, that funded Hitler early on in the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, still control this nation and much of the world today. And the entire development of modern sciences through large tax-free foundations and government funding and DARPA that President Eisenhower warned us about has been in the direction of basically creating an artificial habitat an artificial system where the scientific dictators or the technocrats, as they call themselves, play God over us and manipulate us. They see us as lab rats, as guinea pigs. Now, in the last decade, I've talked a lot about eugenics, really for more than 16 years on air, but intensely for 10 years or more. And in the different documents that we're gonna show you here, we found the UN documents, the Planned Parenthood documents, the World Population uh, Organization documents, where they openly discussed breaking up the family, getting rid of the, quote, arcane institution so they could have their international collectivist system, shutting down all competition against the ultra-rich. That is the system that we face as a society. And I'm gonna go over some of those documents. But up front, I wanna just say this. The system is scared to death of this information. Three years ago, they had a bunch of different George Soros affiliated and Democratic Party affiliated groups come out against me and really simplify uh, the, the uh, straw man that they'd built and go after me by saying, Alex Jones says the government is putting chemicals in your food and water to make you gay. What I had actually said was, Bisphenol A alone, that's in thousands of plastic products, printer ink, you name it, 
is lowering male fertility, is a estrogen mimicker, and is feminizing boys and men and hyperfeminizing women, and has been linked in major studies to breast cancer and other cancers. It is devastating our society. And these har hormonal disruptors are actually running off into the lakes, streams, and rivers and confusing the sexual reproduction of nutria rats, rodents, uh, fish, turtles, you name it. Uh, this is a toxic waste, and it is added to our water, it is added to our food, it is added through the plastics that are in almost everything to our daily lives to reduce our fertility. Now, I want to show you first this document. This is from Planned Parenthood to the president of the Population Council that was tied in with the United Nations. And in it, they break down in 1969 plans to lower population and destroy the family. A, postpone or avoid marriage. B, alter image of ideal family size. Demonize having more than one child. Compulsory education of children. They mean brainwashing. Now listen to this one. Encourage increased homosexuality. Here's another one. Educate for family limitation. Fertility control agents in water supply. And the current White House science czar, John P. Holdren, is on record in multiple books calling for this as well. And I got news for you. It's going on now. You are being forcibly drugged with toxic chemicals. Hundreds of them are added to the water supply, including radioactive isotopes, not just sodium fluoride that gives you a seven-fold increase in cancer. They have gone absolutely ape over the fact that I'm talking about this because it hits at the core of how these scientists are playing God, okay? This is not saying that people in the Roman times, some of them weren't gay or whatever. This is not about a moral issue. This is about to reduce population, giving men estrogen mimickers so that they're not attracted to women and so they are less fertile or infertile. But on the other side, it's making girls go into puberty at nine, 10 years old, many of them now at five. I've seen some articles as young as three. This is all over the Western world. The United States has the highest cancer rates, especially in women and breast cancer. It basically accelerates the aging process to simplify it. It does a bunch of other horrible things as well. It causes deformities in utero, causes more abortions, women to have miscarriages. And that's what this document gets into. It says compulsory abortion for out of wedlock pregnancies, compulsory sterilization of all who have had two children. What do you see in China? Our government went over there in the 70s, made a deal with the U.S. government and the U.N. to industrialize China and finance them if they do this. And now I see articles where they have forced abortions, where they're arresting people or taking their property if they have more children than the state says they can have. China is the model of the world. Break out of this matrix. Realize that you live in a controlled society and an artificially constructed civilization that is designed to dehumanize you and strip you of what it is to be a human. Taking over our very reproductive process, chemically altering men and women at an early age and even in utero. And what happens when I point this out? How does the establishment, the mainstream media, these corporate dinosaur mercenaries of propaganda, these prostitutes, how do they respond? Same way they've done for years. Last week, there were articles in CBS News, ABC News, you name it, attacking myself and Ron Paul, saying Ron Paul goes on Alex Jones' show, and Alex Jones says the government's putting chemicals in your food and water to make you gay. You see, they know people are reading that, and so they take all this research and they just turn it into, Alex says they want to make you gay, and look, Ron Paul goes on their show. When what I've really shown here is this is being done to reduce fertility, to increase cancer, and to destroy our normal gender roles. You're taking people's choices to have children away. You're taking people's choices to choose their sexual preference away. You know, they spin it and say you're born this way, and certainly there's different variants of it. Some of it is natural, but they're artificially adding chemicals that are making rats 
be confused about their gender, male and female. You're being chemically altered. Here are the documents. Here's the White House science are calling for adding stuff to the water. And their answer is, oh, Alex doesn't like gay people. That has nothing to do with this. This is about science and being manipulated by a technocracy that's playing God. The Centers for Disease Control has come out after public pressure and after scientific pressure and admitted that what's in the printer ink and the receipt ink and on the money and in thousands of products, TV dinners, you name it, toilet paper, that people are touching is an estrogen mimicker and was chosen out of thousands of different varieties to be a chemical in the environment to reduce fertility and to basically turn men into servile creatures. The globalists just want to subdue the population so they can engage in chemical and biological warfare against us. Our water, our food, it's all being manipulated. And it's admitted now that the majority of water supplies in the U.S. have high levels of Prozac, high levels of female hormones, high levels of hundreds and hundreds of other chemicals that are, quote, runoff. The problem is I've seen the major studies. In some cases, this stuff is 200, 300, 400 times higher than it could be from sewage runoff. It's being added to the water. There's a reason the American people and the people of Western Europe will put up with such incredible tyranny. It's because we've been chemically and biologically manipulated. And you find out what it's doing to people. It is mind boggling. This is a holocaust that's going on. This is an attack on the human species itself so these eugenicists can bring in their world government. Look at this headline. Bisphenol A now linked to male infertility and gender confusion. Here's another one. Sperm counts continue to plummet, say researchers connected to bisphenol A. Greenpeace finds toxic chemicals in branded clothing. Canned food may expose people to BPA, the little juice box liners. Canada declares BPA toxic, sets stage for more bans. FDA faulted for stance on chemicals in plastics. Here's the good news. A decade ago, when you talked about bisphenol A and other issues similar to it, you were laughed at. That isn't happening now. The Canadian government, different European governments have moved in the last four years to have it removed by law. Here in the United States, retailers have come out and advertised that they're bisphenol A free, but the establishment and the eugenicists have struck back. They're now having it added to literally thousands of different products, as I mentioned earlier, even toilet paper, so that it's incredibly hard to avoid this stuff. These nasty little globalist control freaks count on you being lazy, count on you being trusting. They count on you not researching and finding out the full horror of what they're involved in. This is a total takeover of the biosphere of our planet. Just like Monsanto's coming out with seeds, the Terminator seeds that don't reproduce. You've got to go to them each time. There's a new report out, International Journal of Biomedical Sciences, very prestigious. Monsanto GMO corn linked to organ failure. When you read deeper in the study, it's causing massive infertility in all mammal species and within three generations, near total infertility in guinea pigs, rats. There are no human studies. Do you understand? We're already a generation and a half or so into this and we see fertility plummeting. Within three generations in all mammal species they tested in, 99% infertility and incredible deformities. And now because there's such incredible infertility, the globalists are coming out with the infertility treatments, which they sell at incredible cost to the public. They add things to the water, add things to the food, add things to the packaging chain by design through these global combines, through these agreements. And then when you're sterile, they come back and for millions of dollars, you go to them for these expensive genetic treatments so you can have children, but they're now designer and the companies can build whatever Trojan horses they want into the back end. And then they will have the high-tech treatments that are able to unlock our genetic code and allow us to reproduce again. Once the world government's in place and all their own UN and Club of Rome documents, they're talking about an 80% world population reduction. That's what their world government is about. That's why the big mega banks that run this system want to destroy the world economy so that everybody is dependent on government. They don't want you to be self-sufficient. They want you to be dumbed down and controlled. But if you're aware of the chemical and biological cocktails that are assaulting you, we can fight our way out of this by making choices that limit the amount of exposure we have to this form of warfare. There's a reason all these diseases are increasing. 
because we are being slow killed. We are being soft killed. We are being murdered by a cocktail of poisons. This is the ultimate revolution. This is the human revolution against a technocratic, psychopathic, control freak elite who are playing God. Warn everyone you know about bisphenol A. It's in almost everything. Clothes, printer ink, packaging, it's everywhere. And retail workers and factory workers that are around this are being devastated by it. Let's reclaim our humanity together. Don't let them use little cliches about, oh, we're bashing gay people or, oh, we're conspiracy theorists. When these criminals attack us with propaganda, we need to shove the facts right back in their face and say, we see you, we know what you're doing, we've got the facts, and we're not laying down and taking it anymore. Humanity is awakening to the crimes that you, the eugenicist, have been committing against us, and you will be brought to justice. Now the rest is up to you. Get this information out to everyone you know. The ball is in your court. The information you've seen is only a tiny fraction of the accumulated research that InfoWars.com has amassed. It's now up to you to do your own research, to fully awaken, and then begin the task of awakening others. Our species is strong, and we can defeat this tiny group of psychopaths attempting to set themselves up as God.